Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about head information inside of your HTML files. We're gonna talk about identifiers and classes. So let's jump into it. So when we first created our simple web page, we only had one item inside of our head, which was this title. And typically you inside of your head, you will put a bunch of information about your website. And this way, Google and a bunch of other search engines will know about your website. It's kind of you explaining what your website is to other people is the information that you have inside of the head of your HTML file. So there is one resource that I really like to go to, which is htmlhead.dev. And here it lists out all the different head information that you can include in your HTML files. So let's check out the recommended minimum. So here it says that we should use this meta char set UTF-8. And this is telling your web page the way that you want to display the character set, because in some countries it might end up looking a little bit different. If you have some Unicode characters or some weird characters in your web page, at least it knows that it should be UTF-8. And I'm not going to go into exactly what that is, but this is a recommendation for having that in your head, as well as the viewport. And this viewport will essentially just tell the browser to scale based on, or it will tell the HTML file to scale based on the size of the browser or if the user is on a mobile device. Basically, it will tell it to scale down to that size. So we can include this in our page as well. And of course, it says that we'll also want to include the page title, which we have right here. Now, there is one more meta tag that I would always recommend, which is the description. So we'll say meta name equals description. And this is essentially describing what this website is about. So inside of the content, we might say, welcome to my website where I like to teach about web development. So a lot of search engines will find this description and they will actually put that in the search results. So if we go to google.com, actually I could just go right here and we were to search HTML. Typically this is the description of the website right here. And then typically this is the title, not in all cases. Uh, and obviously if you're doing some shady stuff, then you're going to be pinged by Google. You know, if you're putting in some weird stuff inside of your description and your title, uh, that doesn't relate to the website. But this is where your title will be displayed and then this is where your description will be displayed. So it's very important to have the meta name description inside of the head of your document. Okay, jumping back over to this guide, let's go ahead and look at some of the other elements that we have here. So if we click on elements, you can see that we have things like the style sheet, and then down here in meta, we have things like the description, uh, the robots, this is probably important right here. If you want your site to be crawled by default, your site will be crawled by Google if you submit it to Google Webmaster Tools. And since I told you about that, how about I just go to that link? So google.com slash webmasters. If you sign in, there's a way to verify your website with Google, and then you can show up in their search results. But if you do decide that you want, you don't want the search engines to scrape your site, you can actually set no index, no follow for robots. So basically it's saying that no bots will scrape your site. So we can keep on going through here and obviously we include style sheets inside of the head of our document and icons. And then here's some social stuff. So whenever you share a URL on Facebook or Twitter, sometimes there's a little image there with some description. And this is the stuff that you'll want to put inside of the head of your document or for Twitter. And then you'll see here, there's just a bunch of different use cases like Pinterest, uh, Facebook instant articles. You probably won't be adding a majority of all of this to your website. What you'll probably have is like the default minimum here. You'll probably have the social share tags and then you'll also have your styles and your JavaScript. But be sure to head over here to htmlhead.dev. This is where you can find out about all the different elements that you can put inside of the head of your HTML file. Okay, so now that we have that covered, there is one more thing that I want to talk about, which is identifiers and classes or IDs and classes. So typically whenever we have an element that we create on the page and we want to reference it, we would reference that either with an ID or a class. So let's just say that I have a div here with an ID of box and it doesn't have anything in it. So what I can do with using CSS is I can actually refer 
to this ID and then give it some styles. Uh, you can also use what is called a class. So we could say class equals box, and then we could refer to the class of box. And the difference between IDs and classes is you will only ever have one ID inside of your HTML file. So if you want to have multiple of the same element, you'll want to use a class because classes you can use as many as you want. But with an ID, you will only have one. So the ID is unique. And we can refer to these IDs and these classes inside of CSS and inside of JavaScript. So we are going to cover styling IDs and classes and how you can do that in the next video. Uh, but for this one, I just wanted to kind of show you how you can add IDs and classes to your elements. Okay, and one more thing that I want to cover before we move on to the next video is we've just been using this index.html file right here, but I am actually going to put this in a new folder and then we're gonna create another file and link to it, just so that we can see how all this works. So I'm gonna create a new folder and here I'm just going to call this website and I'm going to move that file in there. And since I've moved that file, I'm gonna to need to close my editor and my browser because I'm gonna to need to reopen this. And also whenever you put a file inside of a folder and you refer to it as index.html, that is how a web server or a browser will link to that specific page. So if we open this up in a browser and say that we just go to slash website, we're actually listing out the directory here, but if we were running a web server and we went to this URL, it would load up this index.html file by default. So the file that you want displayed once the user visits that specific URL is going to be at index.html. But we're not running a web server yet, so we're just going to get a display of the contents. But we will go into talking about servers and server-side scripting in a future video. So now I'm going to open up this website in my text editor, and then I think I'm going to create a new file. So how about I go over here and I right-click and say new file, and I'm just gonna call this blog.html. So we have our main file right here. And how about I just link to our blog right up here at the top. So remember we have an A tag if we want to create a link and then the place that we want it to go to is just going to be slash blog.html. And let's go ahead and just put some content inside of this blog.html. And here's a quick shortcut. If you were to type in HTML, you can say that you can select HTML5 and it will automatically create a default file for you. So we'll just add the title of blog and maybe we'll add a H1 here. We'll say, welcome to my blog. Okay, so saving both of those and we reload our page here. And if we go to the top, we see a link to our blog. So we can click on that and that's gonna fail. Let's see, I think we want the link to actually just be without that slash. So let's click that. And sure enough, we don't need that forward slash, so we just need blog.html. So now we're here at the blog, and then maybe once we're here at the blog, we wanna go back home. So on the blog, I'll just add a new A link, and this is going to go to index.html, and we'll just say back home. And we have the back home button right here. So let's also add a little bit of content, pretend like this is an actual blog. So typically we would have, you know, maybe this might be an H2 and this would be our title of post here. And then we might have a paragraph with some lorem ipsum. And then let's go ahead and maybe create a link to this specific post. So we'll say post-1.html. And we'll say read more. And let's see what that looks like. So we have the title of a post, and then we have the, it's kind of the excerpt or the description of the post, and then we can click here to read more. Let's duplicate this. And we'll rename the H2. My second post. And we have the lorem ipsum, and we'll link this to post two. And we'll reload that. 
And how about we just create this post one and post two. So let's say new file, we have post1.html, and I'm just going to duplicate the content of that. And with the h1, I'm going to change this to title of post here. I guess I could have changed that to post one or something a little bit more descriptive, but I think this will do for now. And we'll change this back to blog. Maybe we even want a home button and a blog button. So we'll say home, and then we'll also say blog, and this will go to blog.html. And then we'll just go ahead and add some lorem ipsum. Okay, so let's test out this first one. Let's reload our blog and click here to read more. And sure enough, we get to the post. We can then go back to the home and then back to the blog. So let's add this second post for post two. So I'm just gonna copy this post one and say new file post-2.html. Okay, and we'll change the title to be my second post. And we also need to change the titles too. So my second post and then post one, we probably want the title to be the actual title. Okay, and then back to our blog, we probably also want to have our home and our blog links at the top of the header. So let's duplicate. This is kind of acting as like our navigation, just a simple navigation. We have home and blog. And let's add an H1 tag here that says home as well. And typically on a web page, you'll only have one heading tag of H1. So we typically wouldn't have two H1s right there. That's just one kind of key point for creating websites is you only have one H1. And that's typically what Google would scrape and say that this is the main content of the site, which is inside of the H1. But for this case, I think it's okay because I'm just showing you how to create websites. So let's duplicate our nav for the blog. And then I think we'll be just about done. Let's save that. Okay, so let's check out our site. We're here at the home. We can then go to the blog and we have our post here and our second post. We can then go to the post and back to the blog and to our second post, and then we can go back home. So that was just a simple website built in HTML, but it still doesn't look too pretty. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how you can include styles in your web page so it can start to look quite a bit prettier. So that's it for now. I will see you in the next video.